Hello and welcome to another episode of the Studio 78 Podcast. I am your host, Nishé from NishéSnow.com. Welcome. I have an amazing guest today, Logan Renee, woman after my own heart. Like everything she says, I'm like, yes, yes. Yes. So you hear me kind of getting a little excited as I'm talking to her. But uh, just a couple of housekeeping things. Please go ahead and head on over to iTunes and rate the podcast five stars. It really, really helps the show. Also, if you love this episode, please share it on social media or via email or tell a friend. That also helps the show out too. For those of you guys who've already done it, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, also, you guys know I'll be a part of the Product Powerhouse Summit put on by The Boss Project. So if you want to hear more information about it, I interviewed one of the co-owners of The Boss Project the last episode, which was nishaysnow.com slash 77. But I'd love for you guys to be a part of it, and it's completely free. Um, to get to it, just head on over to nishaysnow.com slash boss project and you can get your ticket. Okay. So let's get back to Logan. Okay. We go into all kind of goodies on this episode. We talk about how to like figure out what you want to focus on. We, uh, she gives amazing tips for just getting started, you know, really having like the right mindset and things that you could do in order to stay focused. We talk about, you know, know the person that you're talking to if you're starting a business so that you're reaching your right audience. She also talks about how she self-published her book, which is called Never Ask for Permission. Love, love, love that title. And we end the conversation with how to stay motivated and, you know, my favorite topic, which is some productivity tips. So I feel like if you are a business owner or just working a nine to five, Logan gives some really good practical tips for just staying focused and really figuring out like what your passion is and what you want to do. So I hope you guys really enjoy this episode. Let's get started. Hello, Logan, and welcome to the Studio 78 podcast. Oh my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> it's exciting Thank you so to much for interview a fellow on. podcaster. <laughs> yes. And my fellow chocolate sister. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, um, I can't wait to just dig into what you do because I think that the listeners will listen to this conversation. I, you know, it's just started, but I just know because of what you do that they're going to uh, listen to this conversation and just be pumped and energized and kind of ready to pursue whatever they've been dragging their feet on, you know? Mm, yeah. Yeah. It's so important. But before we dig into uh, your business and your brand, can you just tell the listeners a little bit about you before you decided to start it? So before the business, my focus was only myself. Mm-hmm. And when you start a business, everything that you end up doing is always catered to giving and serving other people. So before I started the business, uh, what made me start the business, I guess you could say, is I lost my mom when I turned 25 years old mm. and she passed away from stage four breast cancer. So mm. that made me automatically adjust every single thing in my life. So I, I sat in the middle of my floor and I didn't ask God why my mother left. I asked him what it is that you want me to do, because clearly if I'm still here, um, there must be a purpose. There must be something that I'm supposed to do outside of going to brunch, (laughs) going out of town and going on trips with the girls. You know, life has to be bigger than making everything about me. Mm -hmm. And so that's when the Logan Design Project came. I started doing uh, paint parties. Girl, it was horrible. Like, (laughs) so for the listeners, gotta start somewhere, (laughs) right? When you (laughs) when you start your journey of entrepreneurship or having a business or just having an idea, your first one might not be the best one, but it's gonna start to teach you how to be a boss, how to Mm. lead 
how to show mm-hmm. up, how to serve, how to think outside of yourself, because that's what that's the greatest purpose is not making everything about you. Mm-hmm. So losing my mother taught me that had I not. And of course, I would ask for God to give her back to me today if I could. Mm-hmm. Um, had I not, I doubt. I will be, I doubt I will be in business right now. Mm. And then what was, so what was your background in? Did you already have like a background in almost like coaching or event planning? Just curious. Or was it something like completely different? No. Um, (laughs) So my degree is in public relations and Mm. I work for the government full time currently. So Mm. I was still working for the government because once, especially, I'm from Mississippi. Mm-hmm. So as long as you graduate and you get a good job, you've done well. Everybody right. looks at you like you've made it, girl. <laughs> and it was still this this hole or this gap that I was like, mm, it has to be more, you know, mm. okay. I have a government job It's great benefits. Can I lie? I'm super grateful. Okay. <laughs> but it has to be more than this. You know, Mm -hmm. so I knew that wasn't the end point. And some Mm -hmm. of the listeners might feel that right now. You might be in a Fortune 500 company. You might be pulling in $100,000 and you're still Mm -hmm. unfulfilled. But don't ignore that. There's a Mm -hmm. reason why you're feeling that. So, yeah. So you, you touched a little bit on your beginnings. But when you told yourself, like, you know what, I want to do something. How did that look? So you said, okay, I'm going to start with paint parties. But what are some of the other things you did before you're like, okay, this is the direction that I want to go into? So it's sitting down, getting some paper out. Some people like laptops. I say start on paper and start with a pencil so you can erase a lot of stuff. (laughs) Um, But just do an outline of everything that you're already gifted at, things that you do without any effort. I am a a naturally creative person, so having paint parties was simple. Mm. Posting them on Facebook, getting people to come, that was not my lane, so I had to learn marketing. But Mm. I always start with your initial gift. If you're a creative person, look at things that you can do that generates income that you can do easily. You know, Mm. podcasting, like you have a a wonderful voice for podcasting, you know, so... (laughs) It was easy for you to go into that lane. And it it might be somebody that's very, um, like, they're just attractive visually. Like, you Mm -hmm. know, some people on YouTube, like, I can mm. see why she has a YouTube channel. You know, <laughs> You're like that, drawn to them. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Like, and they're not even talking about anything, but you look at them. He's like, dang, she's so cute. Or he is, you know, and right. even, you know, if you're, you're already fit, go ahead and start recording some video. So look at your natural gift, your natural talent and start there and then start to build. Mm. And so what did that look like for you? Like even after the paint party. So you're like, okay, these are the things that I think I'm good at. And I want Mm -hmm. to, you know, make this impact in the world. So how did you start to build like your brand? So a couple things. (laughs) I'm going to give the (laughs) the listeners four bonuses. This is so (laughs) key. Um, Number one, you have to become, if you're going to be an entrepreneur and you're serious, you got to start reading. Mm. And, and when I say read it, I don't mean like just, okay, thinking girl rich. Yeah. Read those books, read books. that's going to grab your atten- attention and keep your attention. You know, mm-hmm. I know Eric Thomas uh, always talks about, you don't have to read the whole book to get the nugget that you needed for that moment. So if you mm. get something and it, it just changes you and it gives you an idea to do 16 other things, knock those 16 things out before even reading the rest of the book, you know? Mm-hmm. And if you want to get more books in your system, do an audio book instead of listening to the radio on the way to work or something like that. As long as you're getting filled with knowledge, because you will let me change that. Your clients, your audience, the people that you're called to impact is only as great as the as deeper as you go. The mm-hmm. deeper you go, the better your audience is, the better the people around you become. So go mm. deeper within yourself and the greater um, the impact you'll have. That's number one. And, and before uh, you no. get to number two, uh, just curious, yeah. do you have one or two books that you would recommend? Never ask for permission again by Logan Renee. Of course. <laughs> I mean, come on now. 
I never <laughs> ask for permission to get, especially for women who are struggling with identity and low self-esteem. For sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but my favorite book in all the world is What I Know For Sure by Oprah Winfrey. It, oh. it just makes me smile. Mm. Anytime I read it and I go back through it sometimes because there's always a little piece like her her line is um, guard your time because it's your life. Mm. Guard your mm-hmm. time because it's like little stuff like that is like, oh, that's good, Oprah. That is good. Some yeah. good nuggets. Yeah. And then yes. for the listeners out there, too, like a couple of books I would recommend is The Year of Yes by Shonda Rhimes. Mm. Loved yes. that book. <laughs> um, and Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. That as a creative mm. person, for some reason, it just it just resonated with me. I, I, I just love, love that book. But those are kind of two out of, uh, there's a ton that I love, but if I had people start with any, I would, I would say go with those too. Mm, yeah. Just wrote that one down. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, great recommendation. So sorry. Number two. <laughs> um, set up an auto reply during your purpose time. Purpose time is when you, ch- you go hard for 50 minutes. Take a 10 minute break or go hard for 55 minutes and take a five minute break. I used to do 50 and I take a 10 minute break. So I do some jumping jacks just to wake me back up or go use the restroom, fix me some more tea. But 50 minutes, a purpose time, uninterrupted, no emails, no phone calls, and you're just going in on your dream. Mm-hmm. But set an auto reply on your phone like, I love you, can't talk to you right now, you know, working on my dream, call you later. I, of course, my friend said it was lame, corny, whatever. <laughs> the point is, <laughs> this is your time to <laughs> to actually focus and get stuff done. When you keep having interrup- interruptions, you take longer or you just never get it done. Mm. I wholeheartedly yeah. agree. Like for me, like my focus on my husband always laughs at me is when I go into my room, like I rarely will bring my phone in my room because I know if it's there, I'm going to constantly look at it like, oh, let me scroll on Instagram to see what's going on. I'm going to get distracted. <laughs> right. And Every so time. I make sure that my iMac doesn't have any notifications popping up, too, because then I'm going to be like, oh, yeah. what's going on over there? You know, oh, there's a message that came in. So I, I 100 percent agree with that because when you're focused, then you could just get more done. Um, Because we, people say they're not easily distracted, but we are, you know? So you need to like kind of carve out that time where you're not like being distracted by email or text messages or Instagram or whatever it might be. No, that's great advice. I agree. Um, I would say the next one is set like affirming reminders on your phone. So Mm. you have an iPhone under my clock. I just put, you got this. You're 66 days away from your goal. In two weeks, your book comes out. I'm so proud of you. I love you. Um, I honor you. I appreciate you. Just little things that just remind you to keep going at three o'clock, at two o'clock, whatever you're like about to give up or you know you're tired, use at that time, set that um, reminder on your phone. And it'll just, it'll, it'll remind you of the goals that you set because it's easy to set a goal on Monday, but on the 13th day, it's kind of hard to stay consistent with it. So give mm-hmm. yourself something every day as a reminder. I I completely agree because then it just keeps you on task. And it's so funny, like even not necessarily um, dealing with tasks. I'm like, we're like kindred spirits. I I feel every word you're saying. Um, But on my screensaver on my phone, like I took um, a picture of like some lettering idea where it says, slow down, but don't stop. So every time Mm. I open my phone, I see that like, okay, you know, don't burn Mm. yourself out, but keep on going. Right. But you need those little reminders. Right. You know, if it's a reminder about a goal, if it's whatever it is, a quote that keeps you motivated. So I really do um, like having that affirmation or that reminder of that goal or task just to keep you going. Yeah, that's good. And then, yeah. And then so what's your number four? Just to remember, this isn't so much um, a process, but for sure something to be like has to be key as far as your mindset. Your purpose Mm. has nothing to do with recognition. It has everything, everything to do with service. Focus on more of the principle and the heart of it and not the praises that may come with your purpose. 
If you're looking for recognition or an applause or an award every single day, it's not mm. coming. <laughs> mm-hmm. But if you're looking at service and you're looking at, you know, the smiles that you put on people's faces and the difference that you've made in their lives, it's more impactful. But don't mm-hmm. look for the praise or the accolades or the awards, especially starting off. Mm-hmm. Don't even I mean, even as you continue, don't look for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I agree with that. So for for these things, like how did you use that? Like, you know, because there are other people out there like, you know, that are where you were, you know. Oh, I forgot to ask you, what year did you start, um, you know, your 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 business? 2014. 2014. So there are people (laughs) um, that are where you are in 2014. So, you know, applying some of these principles, how did that look for you when you were building your business? Like, did you like immediately do your website and then, you know, start to sell products or did you just do for the first year uh, different events? And then when they started to pick up, you were like, okay, this is a business. Like, you know, what, what did that look like for you? So let's be honest. I was in the red <laughs> the whole year. Okay. okay. If numbers is not your ministry, find somebody that's, that knows numbers. I was in the red the whole year. Thank God I had a real job. Okay. So don't be like me, listeners. Find you somebody that is great with numbers or take the time to study numbers like I learned in the second year. Okay. Um, that would be the first thing I would say do. Uh, because I was like, oh, I could just go to Michael's and get all these. Because the difference between my paint parties and the usual paint parties, we had stickers, we had stencils. It's whatever you wanted to paint night. That's exactly what it was. I wanted that to be the uniqueness or the difference that you paint whatever you want when you come to my party. So whatever. Mm. So I'm just buying all this cute stuff at Michael's. You name it. I had (laughs) glitter, bedazzles. So I didn't care about the bottom line. And I didn't. And this is so key. You should always start with profit. It doesn't matter if you're if you have an event, if you're. You have a podcast, like, how will I profit from this? You know, Mm -hmm. because a lot of times we're just putting stuff out without a plan in place. Now, Mm -hmm. you may not get to that number, but it is your job as a business owner to have that number written down, you know, Mm -hmm. as a goal. Um, I would say the next thing is don't try to get a fancy website. The greatest thing that you can do and still look professional is to get a Shopify site. It's $29 mm-hmm. a month for the basic package. They give you free templates to set everything up. It's really cute. Um, but Love my Shopify. first website, <laughs> oh my God, isn't it everything? <laughs> and it seems like everybody's so nice when you call in. I'm always calling in. They're like, oh, Miss Logan. Yes. Yes, Miss Logan. <laughs> um, be yourself site with Shopify, easy, easy, free. It's not a free tool, but the templates are free. And if you need somebody um, to talk to, they're always there. Oh, the, the spending a lot of money on the website. I did that. I'm not going to tell you how much I spent on my first website that I don't even use anymore, guys. Mm. If you can avoid that, I would say avoid that as much as possible. People <laughs> are buying you. They're not buying your website. Nine times out of 10, they're not going to even check your website. You are the brand. So, I mean, those are like some good, I feel like, lessons learned because I feel like especially for a website, like my, I have a couple of websites out there. My main website is on WordPress, but the reason why I know how to use WordPress is I have a background in web design. So you're so lucky. (laughs) Because WordPress can be a little overwhelming, like starting out. So I always tell people, never start out with that. You start out with either Shopify or Squarespace. But if you're going to be selling any kind of product, like definitely go to Shopify first, right? Yeah. Because everything is built in. It will link into Instagram and they have free and premium templates. And so it's a good way to start. Like to me, it doesn't make sense to invest in your website until like you become bigger, you know, and then you're, you're you're, um, like have like tons of traffic. So now your website is your moneymaker and then it makes sense to invest, but you still have to know the right company to go to because there are a lot of people out here that will take your money and deliver Garbage, you know, garbage. Okay, (laughs) that you again won't use anymore. (laughs) And even to add on top of that, 
you don't even know how you're going to grow and level up in the next couple of years. Right. And how you start is not how you're going to end up. So don't even try to spend all that money at the beginning. Try to save and renew that budget as much as possible. And mm. like you said, the followership and getting people actually to come to your website and the traffic, you know, that's that's what's going to make the difference. Mm. Yeah. Love it. And so, you know, you... You have some lessons learned in year one. (laughs) (laughs) So many. (laughs) So what does year two look like? Tell us a little bit about, you know, the focus of your business in year two and then just how it blossomed from there. I would say who I'm specifically talking to changed. Mm. So I knew that she was always an empowered woman. I knew that she was faith-based Um, I knew that she had a full-time job, but her heart was in being a full-time entrepreneur. So Mm. it was in a similar seat of who I was talking to. So Mm -hmm. mainly focusing myself and talking to her. And of Mm. course, people are going to drop off because you're no longer talking to the masses about random things, you know? Mm -hmm. So the great part is you get to niche down and talk to specific people, people that you have been called to talk to and not just anybody. Mm -hmm. Um, more sure of myself for sure. There, there's something beautiful that happens when you're very clear about who you are and when you're clear about who you are, what's supposed to come to you does. Mm -hmm. So that's a great spot to be in, especially in year two. Um, yeah, I would say those are the top two for sure. And question for you, when did you write the book and start the podcast? Was that you know, year one, year two, like, yeah, when did that come into play? Podcast last year. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't think I would like it. Love it. It's so, <laughs> it's the easiest thing I've ever done. I was actually started with this, you know. Uh, I mean, having great conversations with great people. I mean, mm-hmm. come on, you can't beat that. The book took me four years to write. It does not take you four years to write a book (laughs) and anybody that wants to write a book that is listening, it is more simple than you think. Mm. Um, I can give them a couple nuggets if you want me to. Yeah, absolutely. And, and even before we go there, I just want to tell the listeners her podcast is Soulcation podcast. So S O U L K A T I O N. So definitely go to iTunes and give it a listen. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear about like your book story too, as someone who's also like, um, self-published because you self-published too, right? Or did you go through? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Can you just talk a little bit about like your experience and some of the lessons learned with that? So definitely don't go out here and get all these super fancy courses that break down (laughs) self-publishing. And I've taken three courses, okay? When I say I've swiped my debit card more than I would like to admit, uh, (laughs) it's the truth. But it's simple. You want to get you an outline of whatever it is that you're talking about. The hardest thing that's going to, the challenging thing that's, it's not writing the book, it's naming the book. That's going to be the most challenging Mm -hmm. thing. So Mm -hmm. I say you go to Dollar Tree and you put some post-its on your wall and you just come up with a hundred different names and have people vote on them, which one like just sticks out and pops out to them the most. And listen, listen for, listen for things and cues. Cause I got my book title from a 72 year old woman that I heard on a a podcast that I asked a coffee. Oh, she said wow. something. She, I, I can tell the story real quick. So I invited her to coffee. Didn't think she was going to respond. Definitely didn't think she was going to show up, right? And my mm-hmm. back is facing the sun because in San Diego, we have no clouds. So my <laughs> back is burning. And I'm like, oh, my God, do you mind if I get up and I move? My back is burning. She looked me in my eyes and she said, never ask for permission again. I mm. was like, I know you don't know this, but that's the title of my book. (laughs) Like, be open to listen to everything. So I'm telling you, life will shock you if you're if you're listening. It will Mm -hmm. shock you. And I at that moment at the table, we bought the domain. I sent the new I had already sent the book for print. I had to change it with the graphic designer that night. Like it was (laughs) it was turnaround. I had I had already posted on social media the other title. Oh, yeah, wow. It was, it was crazy. It was crazy. So listen <laughs> for cues. <laughs> um, but self-publishing, all you need is an LLC. 
And then you get a DBA for your own publishing house if you're going to self-publish. So I just made up a name for my publishing house because you're doing business as this publishing house. And then you can start publishing your own books under your own brand, under your own name. Mm-hmm. So after you get you do that, you send your book to an editor. I would recommend two to three editors. Here's why. Your eyes are going to miss words because you've been touching this book for six months or eight months. Mm -hmm. Your first editor, as great as they are, they are going to miss something because they're touching it, you know, six to eight weeks straight. Mm -hmm. I will send it to one more editor and have them do the final proofreading for the book. Like just the final, because yeah. they're going to miss everything that the first two miss. And then you send it to a <laughs> formatter because you don't want to format it yourself. Please don't do it. OK, <laughs> there are so many rules. There's so many dimensions. And that's not worth learning to me. Some mm-hmm. people take the time and learn it. But send it to a formatter. Get you a nice. Oh, this is key about the, the cover design. Go to Barnes and Noble's. Walk around, look at book covers that just strike you. Mm. And nine times out of 10, the cover designer is in the front of the book. Find them on Instagram, on Facebook, send them a message, and then you have your cover designer. Mm. Great advice. Yes. <laughs> Great advice. <laughs> <laughs> And I just want to say, too, I, I do love that title because. We, I, I feel, especially as women, we do feel like we have to ask for permission, or we're oh always God. like, "Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. What are we? What are you sorry for? You didn't do yeah. anything wrong. Why, like, <laughs> you're like, you're sorry." <laughs> and so, I mean, so to me, that title, I mean, it's just, it's perfect. It's absolutely yes. perfect because it's, um, you know, letting women know, like, hey, you know, you have to have confidence to do what you want to do without looking for validation from somebody yeah. else. Right. Yes. We're mm. always asking, do you think I should wear this? Do you think I should cut my hair? But if I cut my hair, should I relax my hair? So I'm not going to relax. <laughs> it's too much. It's exactly. too much. And, it's like, and then it. we'll change what's in our heart or what we were already confirmed to do because somebody says no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 No, that is so great. And then as far as like your book too, just can you tell the listeners a little bit about, you know, like what are some of the chapters? Like what are they, uh, if they decide to purchase your book, what should they expect? Uh, Straight out of the gate. (laughs) Situationships is my absolute favorite chapter. It's the first chapter and it's basically just breaking down how a woman lets her heart run in front of his promises or his commitment or what he said he's going to do. Like you just run past, okay, well, at least he called twice. That means it is something special. It is something deep. And it has nothing to do with that. It's like Mm -hmm. you set yourself up um, to be hurt by expecting something that he never said, basically. Mm -hmm. But the Mm -hmm. entire book mainly is about granting yourself permission Granting yourself permission to say no and not explain why you said no. I -hmm. cannot show up, but I thank you for the invite. You know, Um, not being afraid to go after your dream. Granting yourself permission to go against the grain, to leave the Mm -hmm. corporate job, to leave the government job. And, you know, fan for yourself, basically, without having Mm -hmm. to ask people if it's okay. Um, It's about granting yourself permission to show up. And to trust yourself, even if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know the next best step. And even just speaking up for yourself, just having the courage to speak up for yourself. No, I love that. And even like one of your first examples about, and I feel like, you know, I, hey, I've been guilty of, of this every once in yes. a while when somebody invites you to something yes. and you're like, yeah. you know, you're too tired. Or, you know, you're like, I just don't want to go. Like, whatever the reason is, but then you're just like, but if I don't go, that might hurt their feelings or like, you know? And um, it's just like, hey, if you know you shouldn't go, they'll understand. Like, just do it in a way that's respectful. Don't wait maybe to the ninth hour because you were afraid to say something. Like, give them a heads up early. But, you know, it's... So I just thought that example is is great because I feel like we've all been guilty of that before. Definitely. 
all mm. the time. <laughs> we go on the explain mode. Well, I got to drop off the kids and I got to get new shoes, but I forgot the dry cleaning. It's like, listen, <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> and then also I noticed that you sell um, gear too, right? Like do you yes. sell? Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like what made you decide to start to create products? So, again, the creativity piece. So when I decided to do T-shirts, I was like, well, I might as well do coffee mugs and then I can do cell phone cases and I can do, you know, little girls tees and pullovers. When you're doing the most, (laughs) you're doing (laughs) nothing. (laughs) <laughs> You're not making an impact anywhere. So I'm actually rebranding at the end of this month. Uh, it would just be women's sweatshirts and women's shirts. So mm. I was like, let's maximize one before we go to the max, you know, and let's mm-hmm. be great at this. And because most of the the shirts and things that I sold were women's, it was a couple of little girl shirts, a couple of coffee mugs, but I want to maximize one and make that one fruitful. And the reason mm. why I started it is because I I didn't see shirts that spoke to a woman's identity, mm. like addicted to prayer, you know, allergic to excuses, stuff mm. like that. I needed mm-hmm. I need tees or sweatshirts to say something besides sexy and foxy, you right. know, <laughs> something <laughs> that speaks to the core of who we are besides just being a woman. Mm-hmm. Like we are allergic to excuses. No, I think that's great. It's interesting. Like I'm, um, I'm supposed to meet. I so there's a company called Custom Ink that does like t-shirts, and I yes. actually was in the mall and I put my like business card in there and I won like a hundred dollars, <laughs> like a hundred dollars gift card. So I'm gonna, go, I'm actually going the week that we're recording this to talk to them because I have a design idea and I'm gonna thinking about like just doing like a couple of shirts and a few yeah. sizes. Because products are something else too. Like, cause it's like you don't quite see what you want. And I'm like, maybe I yeah. should just create what I want and see if other people like it too, you know? Because yes. if I'm looking for, this, you know, whatever, because I'm, you know, I usually look for like cool, you know, entrepreneurial type um, slogans or sayings that kind of yeah. embody us as women and what we're trying to do. And I'm like, Definitely. I just don't see anything out there that I'm like, oh yeah, that speaks to me. That's that's who yes. I am, right? So it's like, yes. if you don't see it, you might as well create it. Amen. There's a gap <laughs> and you're supposed to feel it. Yes. Yeah. That's so, so true. You, you know, I mean, it's just like, it's like, you know, just do it. And, and I, you know, and that's another thing too, I think sometimes we're guilty of is we'll, we'll see the gap, but, and we'll say we're going to do it, but we won't do it either. <laughs> right. Yeah, so definitely. do you have any advice for kind of women that are stuck in, or just people in general that are stuck in that space where they just don't, I don't know, have the drive. Sometimes it's confidence. Um, to just do their passion. Right. So you're, it's never going to leave you. And it's going to irritate you if you see somebody else doing the very thing that you were supposed to do. <laughs> I'm <laughs> so sure other people thought of Netflix. You know, people thought of Redbox. And when they saw it, they were like, oh, my God, that's my idea. You know, <laughs> and it's not going to it's going to keep you up. Is going to keep bothering you. You're going to keep noticing that there aren't the T-shirts with your sayings on them or a brand that doesn't fit your idea. You're going to keep seeing these things. So mm-hmm. that's your clue that you have to do it. All of mm-hmm. us have a gift tucked inside of us that we're supposed to be filling somewhere. There is a gap. There's a space. There's a hole that you're supposed to be plugged into. So mm-hmm. you might as well get up and do it. Yeah. And then look for like day because this is so key. We go to a conference, a seminar, a networking event, and we are juiced up. We're like, I'm ready. I can do it. I listened to her podcast today and I'm ready to go. And then it's afternoon and you just stop. 
Find right. you some <laughs> daily motivation that you can go right back to. As soon as you feel like, okay, I'm out of it, listen to a quick video, you know, on YouTube, listen to this podcast, listen to Soulcation Podcast, listen to something that's going to get you right back into it, you know, as soon as you fall out of it. Have those reminders on your phone, wear a bracelet, wear a ring of somebody that I, I wear my mom's ring. So anytime mm. I get tired, I look at the ring or, and I have a picture tucked in the corner of my desk, you know, put those little things around you so you can remind yourself that it's bigger than you. And once mm. you take the focus off of self, you can move out in anything that you're called to do. Mm. Yes, absolutely. And then also like, let's say, Someone is like, okay, I'm ready to do it. I know you speak on like systems and processes a little bit too. So are there is there any advice that you would give to a new entrepreneur, like things that they should do in order to organize their life or their business or whatever in order to make sure that they're successful? Write down everything. I'm telling you, you're going to forget it. <laughs> There's so <laughs> many distractions. <laughs> right now, everything. My favorite um, apps are Evernote, Notes, and Workflowy. Evernote, mm. Notes, and Workflowy. I mean, Workflowy is more, if you like, um, bullet points. Mm. Um, Evernote, if you like to add color and highlights um, notes is just, let me get it out of my head. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then, <laughs> the next step is to organize your notes. Make sure you keep stuff in one place, put a title on everything, you know, on your computer, put folders and everything. So you can go back and find those things. There's some stuff I, I can't find and I know I got juicy stuff on there, but I didn't put it in the right place because mm-hmm. I was trying to rush, you know, even rushing, putting it down won't serve you if you cannot find it. Yep. <laughs> so put it, <laughs> in the same place um, as much as possible. I would say that definitely is step one. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, so I'm like a big journal person, like huge, mm, a big yeah. bullet journaler. So <laughs> my thing is like, write it down. But I'm also like, if I'm on the go, I'm a big notes person also. Like yes. I use the notes app and then just transfer it into like a Word or Google Sheet document. So then I can have like my thoughts organized. Right. Um, and then I love any dot do too. And that's where if I need something from like the grocery store or I need to buy something, that's my list app. <laughs> right. I'm like, what? what's so, the app name? It's called any dot do. Any dot do. Okay. Yeah, I, I love, yes. I just use that one to, for all my lists. Like if I'm like, oh, I need to purchase this from Amazon. Oh, I need to purchase this from the grocery store. Like I know mm. like, okay, I'm only going to that dot for things that I want to remember to buy, like filters for the house or something, new socks. Mm. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's always something. <laughs> it's always something. Um, but I, but I love the advice that you've given because you have to have like some systems in place. Like you got to figure out which app works best for you. But then, you know, I, I love your advice too about make sure you label it and then transfer it to the appropriate place. Because I think we've all been guilty of like putting a great idea down somewhere, but yeah. it's gone. <laughs> yes. like, and maybe you find it a year later, but by then you're like, yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Even another process that I do as far as, because if you're an entrepreneur, you want to meet new people. You never know where that relationship is going to take you. And not so much what you can get from that person, but also what you can give to that person, actually building a for real relationship with that person. But I look at networking events for the for the week or for the month, and I go ahead and catalog, okay, Tuesday, next Wednesday, next Friday, I'm here. So mm. it's already out out of the way, just go ahead and schedule those events that you plan on attending. And of course, make sure you go. (laughs) And on those days, I try not to do too much. So there's no excuse to be tired and not to show up. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because I've already committed to going or attending. So I try not to do too much on my lunch break or, you know, any documents or work on any documents that's too hard or too mind consuming on that day. Because once you enter into a networking event, it's full throttle. Mm -hmm. You're you're in beast mode. (laughs) You know, trying to meet as many people as possible, trying to be as sincere and authentic as possible. You know, Mm -hmm. you're you're walking into a room where it's challenging you to be somebody else because you're trying to fit in, but you're fighting to be yourself. So that takes Mm -hmm. energy. 
you know? So, um, on those days I make sure I'm not doing too much. So I'm my full self when I go to events. Love it. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> so I just have like a couple of wrap up questions. Um, the first one, we've touched a little bit on it, but my question is how do you stay organized? So you've mentioned, of course, like um, the different apps you use, but even when it comes to all the things in your business, like networking events or speaking engagements or sales or things like that, um, any tips that you could provide the users, users, excuse me, the listeners on, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute, this is not web design. Um, any <laughs> advice <laughs> that you could provide the listeners on just how do you keep it all together like any tips tricks software anything I love first that you can laugh at yourself that's <laughs> the key everybody <laughs> if you can laugh at yourself as an entrepreneur and not take yourself so serious you're gonna go far because you're not stressed out because you haven't laughed in six weeks you know <laughs> laugh at laugh at yourself <laughs> exactly you just gotta well, keep it laugh and keep it moving <laughs> I know because you know time. a lot of times people just think certain things are the end of the world or they'll like stumble on stage or they might go to mm-hmm. a meeting and and didn't deliver the speech that they or the pitch that they thought they would deliver and they just beat themselves up for days and it's just like it's over you know just say hey I did the best I can and I'll do better next time and keep it moving right yes and just don't watch (laughs) that particular speech or talk like okay I won't be looking at that one (laughs) (laughs) this would not be featured on Instagram right yeah (laughs) that's so funny (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so my my go to is taking a deep breath, people. Breathe. Mm. Telling mm. myself it's okay. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. okay. And writing everything down. So I just try to get out of my head. And I write I usually write down three things that have to get done and I circle the one thing that must get done. Circle, mm-hmm. put a star, put a little check box because you know you want to get those endorphins for the day. Like, oh, I have a check mark. Right. Um, <laughs> but circle the most important thing. So if I get this done, I have done everything, you know, myself. Um, another very important process that I, I try to remain consistent with is my morning routine. So mm. five o'clock, I'm up. I do 20 minutes in the Bible, 20 minutes studying, 20 minutes of I am statements. Um, Mm. then my next 20 is some book that I'm reading. Um, Mm. and then I'll do five minutes of playing some type of math game on my phone. So Mm -hmm. I can just level up on my math skills a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) And then I play some type of trivia game on my phone, just random questions to make me think, make me explore. And then this is what's really funny. I've never shared this with anybody. I'll get on (laughs) YouTube and I'll watch a five minute tutorial on an animal or um, an African-American person just to learn my history you know, mm. a little bit or learn something unique about animals because they're so unique and they they're are. so <laughs> great for storytelling, you know, mm. like why a gorilla does this or an elephant does this and then tying it back to people because people Ooh. know what ele- they know what ele- animals look like, of course. So then you put that picture in their head and it gives them, you know, just something graphic to remember. Y'all remember that story that she said about the elephant or the gorilla, you know, mm. it just ties everything back around. So I get on YouTube. YouTube and I watch interesting stories on animals. Yeah. Mm. And then question, just to uh, backtrack a little bit, just so just in case the <laughs> listeners are curious and want to mimic uh, your routine. You said I am statements. I am. I actually call them soul formations. I, I would love to share that list of them with your listeners for free. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. If you uh, email me the link, I'll make sure to include it in the show notes. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want that list. Basically, it's a, it's a list of I am statements of who you really are, not who mm. Instagram says you are, or the people that's jumping in your DMs say that you are, or your elementary school teacher that, you know, probably said that you weren't going to be one of the smart kids or, you know, the most successful. It just really counteracts all of those statements and things that's happened in your past. And it really gives you the clear definition of who you really are. Mm. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so my other question <laughs> is, what's your favorite tool or software? I would say notes. <laughs> is, is the I, notes? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I use them every day. I, use them all the time. I mean, notes I is great. Know. I mean, it's very simple, but you, it pops yeah. up really quick. You just yes. put in your thoughts. You can dictate it, like, and then it's there, <laughs> right? Like, no, yes, I, I, I use no, I use notes a lot, so I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish it was something else that was so good, uh, but definitely notes for sure. Very cool. And then please just uh, let the listeners know where to find you, your website, your social media handle, and also if you have any events or anything else uh, that you'd like them to know about, please uh, please list it out. Definitely. I am at Logan Renee across all social media, and that's R-E-N-A. Logan Renee, R-E-N-A. And my first retreat will be in San Diego in September. I'm Ooh. super excited about it. So be on the lookout. It will be everywhere. Trust and believe that. So um, LoganRenee.com. I'm going to share that soul formations list with you all for free. Um, so just stay connected. Even write me on Instagram and say, hey, I've listened to her show. And just tell me what you think. I would love to hear your thoughts and anything that I didn't cover. Just ask me and I don't mind responding at all. So, you know, before we go, now that you mentioned it's retreat, <laughs> yes. um, I just have to ask you real quick, yeah. uh, what made you decide to do a retreat? That's like, you know, like planning a wedding, you know, that's like uh, some serious event planning. But what made yes. you say like, okay, I think I want to do something like this? <sighs> When I talked about there being a hole or a gap or a f- like you're the filler, mm-hmm. there there are wonderful conferences out out there, and there's not I'm not even comparing mine. There is there's not a comparison because each one brings something different. I want to be the difference. I want women to walk out knowing who they are. And they're like, they may not know what's the next best step or the the financial strategy on how to get there, but if they lose somebody in their life if their heart is broken, if they're going through different different seasons or transitions that are really hard for them, they never move from the place of this is who I am. So mm-hmm. I'm going to have interactive games and different pamphlets and manuals for them to take and free giveaways. I'm going to have so many fun things mm, <laughs> going on like that it. day. Um, just so women are sure, you know, mm-hmm. not cocky, but sure about who they are. And I think if, if more women were more sure, more, I, I call it hopefident, not confident, because <laughs> hopefident is wholeness and confidence in a marriage. We can go mm. into that at another time on another show. <laughs> um, <laughs> but just sure about who you are. I think that's the most beautiful thing. Mm. Well, good people. Y'all need to follow <laughs> Logan so you guys can find out when this is a great excuse to go to San Diego too. Yes, to come down. Please come down. <laughs> well, Logan, this has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. I, I, I truly enjoy myself. This was so much fun. I can't <laughs> wait to have you on the Soulcation podcast. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Love, love, love talking to Logan. She is a woman after my own heart. I just love everything she had to say. I think she gave a ton of practical tips in this episode. I really loved her tips in the beginning where she talks about when starting out, read good books to get inspired, set an auto reply for your purpose time, set uh, affirming reminders on your phone and to focus on the principle, not the phrases. Like if you do nothing else, like just start with those four things and that will help get you focused and motivated, which is sometimes all you need to get started. So loved, loved, loved all the tips. And then we dig into, uh, you know, how much money or time to put into a website. And it's so funny, I get that question all the time for, from people. I think that's like one of the top three questions people like ping me about. And so know that I do have an episode coming up this season where we're talking about websites and we get into that a little bit about, you know, when to invest, when not to invest and all the things. Cause really it, it just depends. Like sometimes it doesn't make sense to invest money in a website and 
And sometimes it does, depending on, you know, your audience, your budget, what you're trying to do. Like, is your website your main bread and butter? Or is it really just a landing page to show people that you're out here in the world, right? So it it, it really just depends. But I just wanted to let you guys know that I will be talking about that more this season. Um, but I appreciate Logan, too. Um letting us know for her particular situation, it, no, just doing it herself was great. And she's been able to accomplish all the things she needed to do. So love, love, love her sharing that. Okay. So yeah, this is it. Um, please <laughs> catch me on Instagram at N-A-C-H-E-S-N-O-W. And if you love this episode, please rate me um, five stars and uh, on iTunes. And if you want the links, because we mis- mentioned a ton of links in this episode from some apps to some books, y'all kind of goodies, please head over to nishaysnow.com slash 78 and you'll find the show notes for this page with all of the links in it. All right. And if you love this episode, please share it. Share it with a friend that you think um, may love it. All right. Thanks again for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. And I will catch you guys next week on my birthday. Crazy. Okay. Talk to you guys later. Bye.